will explore the night of replaced glass that occurred this September 2023 at the U.S. National Cathedral. This week, new stained glass windows at the National Cathedral of the United States were unveiled. Were these new windows a testament to the saving power of Jesus Christ? Did they proclaim peace? Did they show Elijah carried into the clouds or John the Baptist in the river? Not at all. These four new windows proudly proclaim no and foul to all parishioners entering the nation's cathedral. NPR calls these windows, quote, racial justice themed. The windows show no crucifix, no saint, but a mess of feet and difficult to read signs. There is movement, no peace. There is no God above. Anti-human, no faces look for guidance. These windows took six years to create and install at a cost of well over a million dollars. A poem, American Song, by Mellon Foundation President Elizabeth Alexander is also being installed below the windows. This limestone carving will be paid for in part by Jew Steven Spielberg and his wife, Kate Capshaw, through their Heartland Foundation. The Heartland Foundation also gave a million dollars to Ukrainian NGOs despite the high risk of corruption in that country, including the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society in 2022. The National Cathedral is a Christian institution. The very Reverend Randolph Marshall Hollerith, the cathedral's dean, said the previous four Confederate windows, quote, were offensive and they were a barrier to the ministry of this cathedral and they were antithetical to our call to be a house of prayer for all people. For reference, the previous four windows were topped by crucifixes. Two showed General Lee and General Jackson praying for guidance outdoors among plants and trees, surrounded by God's creation. General Lee's window was simply captioned, reading the Bible. These so-called offensive windows contained an exponentially greater number of pieces of stained glass, creating a more intricate image than their replacements. One of the windows explicitly called for peace, and showed a man with his palms open and outstretched toward the parishioner. The very reverend railed against the prior windows in the September 23rd, 2023 unveiling, telling a sparse audience that the Lee and Jackson windows, quote, were telling a story that was not a true story. This ignores all of the moments of prayer on battlefields throughout the Civil War. Lee and Jackson, in positions of prayer and rejoicing, tell a very true story. According to the book of John, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And in Colossians 4.2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. The National Cathedral has given various excuses for replacements of the Confederate windows. They told NPR replacement was necessary in the wake of a 2015 church bombing, but then they told Associated Press replacement was necessary in the wake of 2017 Charlottesville protests. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, as we know from 2 Corinthians 11:14. Sadder still, the National Cathedral and its million-dollar We Hate the South project is minutes away from parishes in need of funding. Episcopalian Pohick Church of Lorton, Virginia, for example, asks the public for a safer playground for its flock's children. Despite the National Cathedral being in the Episcopalian family of faith, it has ignored these churches and decided to drive forward in race division. While the Confederate windows were removed in 2017 and stored in the cathedral attic, it was not until 2021 the cathedral managed to find a black artist to create new windows. It had to find a black artist. 
The previous windows were a 1953 gift from the United Daughters of the Confederacy. In a showing of the ongoing lame duck status of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, it appears the windows will be left to rot in the cathedral's attic instead of returning to a home that appreciates them. I have found no petitions, no calls to action, no calls to call the cathedral by the United Daughters of the Confederacy or Sons of Confederate Veterans or any of the many groups that are supposed to protect heritage in this manner. And this is part of an ongoing trend on the American tra traditionalist side where there is outrage on Twitter or x.com, but there is absolutely no action items. There are no petitions posted. There are no phone chains. There are There is nothing that anybody can do. And so it's just continual outrage from the right with no plan forward. And this is simply not good enough. Today is an opportunity for us to recommit ourselves and to recommit this cathedral to joining this march towards fairness for all Americans, especially African Americans, said Reverend Hollerith alongside his bishop, Marion Budd, and you can find them both on Instagram, at R. Hollerith and at Marion and B-U-D-D-E. Now let's reflect on this statement for a second. Towards fairness for all Americans, especially African Americans, so for one group to be treated more fairly than others. Does your church or school or other organization give money to the National Cathedral? The National Cathedral raises $115 million annually on average from exclusively private sources. This week, it may be worth it to ask your parish priest, professor, deacon, or teachers to stop all funding to an organization that hates the American South, that hates American veterans, and that hates the American people.